Hey, this is Flo and in this video I will show you everything that you need to know about Swift UI lists, all of the initializers, the co most common view modifiers, how to style them and so on. If that's something that you enjoy then please consider subscribing, like the video and let's get right into it. So first of all there are basically two main ways to initialize a list. So the first way is to use just the list view and put your data inside of the list like the first one here. This is very easy to use, it's also less code than the second version where you nest a for each view inside of the list view and then have your collection of data, so in my case just a range of integers from 0 to 50 inside of the for each instead of inside the list itself. This enables some view modifiers that do not work directly on the list that we will look into a bit later. Okay, so just remember there are basically two different ways. They produce the exact same output in this simple example here. You can see the output on the right. Either you directly pass your data into the list or you use a for each inside of the list. There is also a new way to initialize a list and that is limited to iOS 15 and SwiftUI 3. In that way you can pass a binding to a collection to the list initializer. So as you can see here, I have created a user struct that's identifiable and that also has a name string. And then I just added an array of users here. By the way, all of these make great iOS content. You might want to check them out. And then down here in the list, I can pass a binding of my users array into the list using the projected value, which you can use of a state variable by prepending the dollar sign to your variable, so dollar users. Now the user that we capture in the list closure on the right hand side, that is actually also a binding to a user. So we need to access the wrapped value in order to display the name as text. So for a simple example this doesn't really make sense, but I'm sure there are plenty of use cases where iterating over a binding is really useful. All right, let's look into the different list styles. There are actually five real list styles and then there's the automatic list style, which just chooses the standard list style for the device that you're running the app on. So the automatic list style for iOS and also different iOS versions is different than the one for iPadOS, for example. On the left hand side, there's the plain list style, not much to see there. Then there's the sidebar, which removes the list row separators. Then there is the inset list style, which has a tiny bit of a leading inset. It's hard to see, but if you compare the inset list style with the plain list style, then you will see that there is a bit of leading inset. And then the last one here is the grouped list style. It has no inset, but it has that grayish system background that is also used in forms. And then you can combine the inset and the grouped style into the inset grouped style, which is inset on both the trailing and the leading edge, and it has that gray form background. This one is the standard list style in iOS 15 for iPhones as of right now. We've already seen that list row separators may be different with different list styles, for example, with the plain list style and the sidebar list style. Now Swift UI 3 in iOS 15 has added a new view modifier that you can use on your items inside of the list, so not on the list itself, but on the items inside of the list, and that's the list row separator view modifier, where you can set the list row separator to be either hidden or not hidden. And then there is also the list row separator tint modifier, where you can select a color, a tint color for the list row separator and you can also specify if you want it only on the top edge, the bottom edge or all edges. Now this means that you can, for example, if you have different views inside of your list, not just a for each of the same view as I have here, then you can apply different list row separator tints to the different list row items. Next up are sections. I have created a very very simple example of sections here. 
So I have a list of 0 through 5, which is my section ID. And then for each of those section IDs, I create a section with a header text of just a section ID. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then inside of that section, I have 11, so 0 through 10 list items themselves. So all of the rows that you can see on the right hand side here. In practice, you would usually have some kind of nested data structure where you have your sections array and then each entry of that section array has all of the data that is needed for the inner for each loop. These sections also might look different in different list styles and on different devices. Let's continue with the modifiers and this one is brand new in iOS 15 and SwiftUI 3. That's the refreshable modifier. So if you want to add a pull to refresh functionality to your list, you can just use the dot refreshable modifier. And the great thing in my opinion is that this closure is actually asynchronous. So you can yeah, create asynchronous tasks there and run them yeah, quote unquote in the background of your app. And for example, refresh some of the list content or look for new posts or whatever your list is about. And then very similarly, you can also add a search bar like this in iOS 15 with the searchable modifier. You just have to pass in a binding to a string and the string is then what the user types into the search bar. It automatically comes out of the box with the animations and so on that you might already know from your iKit. But one thing to note here is that I think that the searchable modifier only works if your list is embedded in a navigation view. Next up is a suite of tools that revolve around the edit button and the edit mode. So I've just created a very, very simple list here inside of a navigation view. So we have a toolbar at the top, given it a navigation title of edit button. And then inside of the toolbar, I have added a edit button, which comes out of the box of Swift UI. And this edit button can toggle the environment value for the edit mode to active or inactive. And you can grab that edit mode state from the Swift UI environment. Now, mostly you don't even need to deal with the environment state yourself. We will look into three main ways that this edit button can be used to add extra functionality to your list. The first one is moving rows. So for that, this is basically the same setup as before. The only difference is that I have extracted the range, so 0 through 10, into an array of integers, my items variable at the top. And then I have added the onMove modifier to my for each. The onMove gives me an index set and an index or offset. And this function gets called when the user has tapped the edit button and then dragged around some of the rows in the, in the list. And then in this case, I just call the array.move uh, method, it has the exact same signature as the onMove view modifier. So this allows your user to move around list items and you to handle how they get moved and what happens in the background, for example, some database update. Very similarly is deleting rows. So for that, the user also needs to tap the edit button and then the little yeah, delete icon comes up on the left of the row or you can swipe to delete from the trailing to the leading edge. All of this happens just by adding the onDelete view modifier. And I just call the array.remove method here. You can, of course, add your own implementation, for example, removing also the entries from your online database via some kind of API. Okay, and then also very interesting is allowing the user to select rows. So once again, they have to tap the edit button but the interesting part now is that we have added a new state variable called selected items, which is a set of integer. Integer because that's the ID type. So as you can see in our list, we have an ID of self. So the integer itself is the ID. So we need to have a set of integers. If your ID was of type UUID, then you would need to have a set of UUID. 
And then the list initializer now also has a third argument called selection, which is just a binding to our selected items set. But this also works with a binding to your type directly. So for example, here I could also bind to a single integer. That way the user can only select a single list item. But when you provide a binding to a set, the user can select multiple list items, as you can see in the screenshot here on the right hand side. Okay, and then also swipe actions. Swipe actions are added brand new in iOS 15 and SwiftUI 3. And you can actually add several swipe actions to the leading side and several to the trailing side. And it's once again very simple. Just attach the swipe actions view modifier to your list content. So in my case, the for each, you can specify the edge. So here I have both of the buttons on the leading edge. You can also stack different swipe actions modifier after each other. So one for the leading edge and then one for the trailing edge, for example. You can also specify whether the swipe action should allow a full swipe to automatically um, yeah, call the button action instead of the user having to tap on the button. And one thing to note here is that you can specify the tint color of the button. Here I specified orange, which then gets resembled as the background color of the swipe action button inside of the list. Similarly, here I have added the gray tint color to my button. All right, that's it. I hope you learned something new and I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, just ask in a comment. And once again, if you watch till the end, please consider subscribing. I make a lot of videos and I hope you will enjoy them. All right, that's it. And see you in the next one. Bye.